how can you implement FISBUS in an SAP or CPI environment? Uh, so FISBUS is a children's game that you would go through a list one, two, and then it would be FIS because it's divided by three. Then you will do four and it will be five that is divided by five. So it will be bus and six that is divided by three. Uh, that's FIS, you got 10. And then once you got 15, it's FIS bus because it's dividable by both. And the idea is to give user or give an, uh, have it as an interview question to understand how people are able to react and how they can use the platform, how well they're writing code. And there is a lot of different answers in different languages about how this can be done. And obviously it's probably easier just to put it in, in a Groovy script or something else if you wanted to implement it. I wanted to see how it would be possible to do something like this in a CPI environment where you had to iterate through a list and figure out what was going on. So this was the, the purpose of this and see what could be done. Obviously you would never implement it like this, but it does give some learning about what the platform is able to do. Uh, and this is what this video are about. If you wanna implement it in CPI, just create a, <laughs> a, a Groovy script or a JavaScript that puts out the answer. That's probably the easiest part. So one of the things that, that I found that was pretty useful, so I created a main method I could start up with with my, my processing. And if I look at this, two slides, uh, we started up with an HTTP call, we initialize, and here we're setting a property that's just called flow. It's just a way, some a value I always wanted to be true that means that this, this loop will never end and we do have now a number here that specifies the max number of iterations that we can run into obviously we could also have built something into this that the camel expression equal to or more than whatever uh, depending on what the condition is uh, so it will loop as long as this is true um, but we have then just specified a, a limit of, on 20 because we don't really want it to, to run forever. What it will then do is it will run this integration process. And so every time it's processing this, it will figure out what's the value. And the simplest way I found out to do was just to create a, a body where I just took the camel expression or camel property one thing you could obviously see is when I run this, it will start up with with zero and then one, two, three. And obviously that's not really correct. So you probably want to add a one to this. Um, so it will start at one instead of zero. Um, the idea is here, I want to put it in an X path um, or property that I could use for my routing. Uh, in here, I also saved the old body because I'm now overriding it with the new body here. Um, so, so then we have the the branching here, and in the branch, in in the router here, we have um, all the different modules. And one one way we can do that to simplify it is just to to order these and that means that it will take number four first and that will try to mold both both these two values out and then if they are both equal it would run this one would would then be i guess this one down here that it will run um layout here is not really optimal but i guess you know that um and then once i found the, the relevant part i'll just set the text as that and the same for, for the other ones. And for the normal approach, I will just set the text as the camel expression language uh, we have here. Um, then at the end, I will do an append. So each of all of these approaches will, will be mapped into one, one go. And here I'll just take the old body from my property, the new property as the text, which is the current line. There's a line break between here. Um, you cannot really see that. 
uh, but that's what's the case and then that means we are getting line breaks each time for on each line as we call this um, and then that is basically it because there's no more steps after here it will just return everything it has in stock for me and let me just uh, show you the traces of this so if we just took a look at the, some of the trace we've run we can see here the payload this is raw called five times and we can see the old body is being increased each time we can see the the loop uh, the call activity number the the loop index here is first time it's called with number three um, and then we can see the headers, uh, see the body. So here we have uh, six as the the index, and I guess then we also have the camel expression six in here. Um, yeah, I think it's it's it works out as <laughs> as expected. It was a little difficult getting these things to work. One thing you could also consider is to to create a route that will create add fizz, add bus, and map them into to one stream. So you just have route is equal to this or is equal to, to that afterwards. And the advantage of that is then you can create a, a secondary condition to see if there's actually any content in it. Then you would use the, the, the cool old, old expression. So that may be, a, be an option for it. For now, this is uh, the best I could do, and yeah, the 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 best way I found to do modules was just in an, an X path expression. That was uh, where it made made the most uh, most sense to handle this. I hope this has uh, been useful. Something you can learn from. You can download the this uh, version of the iFlow uh, and see it out and let me just before I sh show you just show that it actually does work so I'm sending to the client and I can see the data coming back um, as we have expected it to do so um, yes hope this has been uh, interesting do like the video do uh, share it and uh, love to see you sometime soon thank you